Wow. It is a stunning, stunning morning. There is so much fog just rolling in and hovering over the mountains. It's so beautiful today. In the sky, there's like little holes where the sun's peeking through. It's just so beautiful. I can't get over this morning. And it's like warm, yet the air is crisp. It is so nice. It's definitely spring starting. Little bits of green are starting to show. And the girls are drinking out of a puddle. <laughs> so cute. They're up like bright and early this morning, gallivanting all over the yard. I just had to come out because it was so beautiful and I haven't seen the sky looking like this in quite some time. Almost like it wants to pour rain but it's going to be sunny out in the end. So it's so lovely. I'm just taking a nice look at the clouds. They're amazing today before I get started because I have a rather busy day ahead and the lake is opening up and it looks so beautiful it's cutting open and melting right down the middle of it where the creek runs in so pretty what a day okay so i need to get started because i have the kids coming over for my easter dinner and i have cooking and steaming clothes we have a celebration of life tomorrow and i had to get out some things that we're going to wear some dress pants and a dress and it's quite chilly so i'm not sure what to do i have laundry to fold so many things to do honestly i really need to get started <laughs> All right, so the first thing that I want to do is I've got butter in the frying pan and I've got my bread cubed up from yesterday because they sold out of, I couldn't find any bread crumbs so I, or bread cubes, so I thought oh, I'll just buy some bread and make my own. So I dried that up and I got the butter sauteing and now I'm just going to blend the onions and celery for my stuffing and get that all done ahead. I figured that I would do three dishes ahead. The stuffing, the broccoli and cheese casserole. Oh, these onions are strong. It's crazy. And the ca creamy carrot casserole. So if I get those done, I can put them in my front entrance, which I use as an extra fridge because it's so cold. And then I can have a really nice day visiting when they come over and we can do our late Easter supper that we are going to do on the weekend, which is tomorrow. And then I can have fun visiting. So that would be so nice. So now I'm just going to get the celery all done and chopped up. And of course I've got my food processor out because that's my favorite thing that eliminates so much work. And if you have carpal tunnel or arthritis in your fingers, it is just a lifesaver. And I've been getting looking for gadgets that I'm not really a gadgety person actually, but all of a sudden, since my wrists have been bothering me so bad, I've got some exciting things. I've had this food processor for years, but I got this new chopper and I've got this potato peeler because that's what two things that really bother me is chopping vegetables and tech technically that's like always been my therapeutic way of it's like therapy for me because I just love cooking so much and baking so it just is horrible when you can, when it's painful so I've got this pumping thing pump and chop for the veggies and the potato peeler because peeling the potatoes is just just can be totally draining when you have to do a whole bag at a time so I would get the kids to help me but they're not here so I'm gonna try my get I'm gonna try out my gadgets and see how it works today. But I'm just getting now I'm getting the celery in with the onions and the butter. And I'm gonna just make my chicken, add some chicken broth and make my base for my stuffing. And oh, does it ever smell so good in here? If you guys could only smell this through the camera, it is awesome. 
So I'm going to turn the burner on because I like to boil water and add water to my veggies to add some moisture to my stuffing. Salt and pepper, thyme, and of course poultry seasoning. Mmm, this is just smelling amazing. Okay, I'm, I have to look up in my top cupboards for my thyme because I don't know where I put it. I have so many spices. I have spices on both sides of the cupboards lining the entire tops. So there it is. Something about thyme, and it, I have to put extra in in my stuffing. It just is so amazing, but not too much because I, I find if I put too much in, it's got. I don't like it. I just use a little. Same with the poultry seasoning. I don't use too much because I'm not a fan of sage, and they usually have a lot of sage in there. I find that that's when people complain of having a stomach ache after eating turkey or something it's because if there's too much sage in this in the stuffing mix so I go light on that and more on the chicken broth kind of flavor the thyme and just like I said a little bit of poultry seasoning and mm, already smells like Easter Thanksgiving in here Oh, this is this is coming together so nice. Okay, so now I'm gonna start getting my carrots prepped while that's steaming. So I've washed and I'm gonna peel all these carrots and save some in this bucket for the chickens. And then I'm gonna try out my new pump and slice, <laughs> which sounds so funny, but man, this thing is like, life-changing not even kidding this thing is takes absolutely no effort from your hands I can't believe it but I'm just gonna slice these carrots up and peel them and slice them and they're kind of not perfect so you'll I'm just kind of peeling here and there I'm not peeling them perfectly but they're not that bad um, I scrubbed them really well first so I'm not super being super fussy about it. Plus they were organic. Oh, I'm getting so many carrot peels and it's not the chicken's favorite thing is carrot peels, but they prefer the green stuff, but that's okay. They will be happy. They come running for anything. They come right to our front door. And it's really funny now when we drive in the driveway, they come right into the car and run up to us thinking that we have something for them. It's so cute. So I'm loving this little gadget and it has this tray that just clicks on. I have just, this is the first time I've used it and I'm just figuring out how to use it. And it actually, it actually cleans up really, really nice as well. And you just put the veggies in and pump the top with like no effort, no anything. And it just chops them all up so nice and puts them in the little container for you. It's really great. I can't believe how fast it is actually. And it makes a nicer, thicker slice where my food processor, the blade that I have, I don't want to use that because it makes a really, really thin slice. And I want a, I want this nice, yeah, you can see here, this nice thick slice, but not too thick for the carrot dish that I want to make, which is called cream cheese carrots. So I'm probably just going to use the same pan and get all this stuff chopped up and use the same pan as after I put my stuffing all together.
Okay, my steaming celery onion butter mixture with the seasonings is all ready now and I'm gonna stir it into my my bread cubes. Mm, if you could smell this, oh, look at the steam, it's so amazing. At least I remembered to put pot holders underneath it this time because last time I left a white mark on my counter but it seems that the sun beats in on it so much that anything marks it up it always disappears after a little while so no big deal but I'm just got to get this all stirred up and then I can focus on the other two things that I was gonna do and then I can get to folding that laundry eventually that's heaped on the couch in the background <laughs> I just dumped the basket right there to remind me that I need to do this because there's stuff in it I need for tomorrow. So, oh, this is coming together really nice. Looks so good. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I've got to get these carrots finished. It's time to get this thing all wrapped up. I've got my cheese out. I just want to get finished with the slicer. I realized on the back there's a dial there and you can change it to the thickness you want. So when I figured that out, it was so great. I thought this thing is even better than I thought it was going to be. And I have no... I, I just bought it off a of, random off of Amazon and tried it and it's fantastic. I can't believe it because usually I buy things something like that and it would be really junky but this thing is awesome and it stands up really securely. It's not like a it's not doesn't tip over or anything and the blade is extremely sharp. So I'm pretty impressed with it. And it's a star frit in case anybody's wondering. So I've got that sorted out now. I can get working on my broccoli casserole. And now I'm also going to melt the butter and the cream cheese for my cream cheese carrots and get the seasoning in there. Bring this broccoli to a boil and I wanna tender cook it just so it's just only halfway cooked. And that because I'm gonna put tin foil on it and bake it then bake it the next day. Mmm, this is so good. I don't mind if I do eat a couple pieces of this broccoli I've cooked. So good. That's just exactly the way that I like it. Wow, I made a lot, <laughs> but it's going to cook down. You know how broccoli cooks down so much when it's cooked. So I'm just going to give this a really good mix and get the rest of it put together because it will all, it will all settle down in the pot. Now I've added my carrots to my melted butter and cream cheese and onion 
and garlic and salt and pepper mixture and I have no recipe for that I just do it all in my head I've made it for years it's my daughter's favorite recipe and she always requests it so I thought that I would for sure make that one and I'm just gonna get this all mixed up and wrapped up mixed really good and now I'm gonna put some cheese on the top I've grated all this cheddar ahead of time in my food processor of course because that's so fast and I and I grate it a whole big block or two at a time so it it goes really quick and I always have some in the fridge then I always have it to grab it's so handy Wow, it's turning into such a nice day. The sun is just beating in. It's so beautiful. I want to get these done so I can go outside and give the chicken some of these scraps and go have a break. Go for a little walk to the chicken coop and see if there's any eggs. So I'm just going to get some tin foil on these and then like I said, I'm going to throw them in my front entrance, which is behind that door that you see. It's almost like having a cold room because there's no heat goes to it it's just like a front boot room and i always use it as an extra fridge in the cooler weather because it stays icy and cold it's so nice I finally have time to steam the clothes, so I'm gonna give them a good hot steam, get all the wrinkles out, set them to the side, and then they're ready for tomorrow and I don't have to think about what we're gonna wear for our outfits. It's time for a super quick cleanup because I have, still have lots more to do today. So I've got this chicken outside, this white chicken, she's called, there's three of them and we call them the three blind mice and she's nesting in this area of the forest off to the side and she's been doing this every single day so I'm going to go over there and see if there's a pile of eggs. Oh hi girls, hi babies, they're all coming thinking I have more treats. But I want to take a walk over there and see what she's doing in the bush because she's out, just out there every day. But maybe she just has a favorite hangout spot. I don't know, but it's so cute. So I'm going to go investigate. Oh, she jumped up and ran. Okay, that seems to be nothing over there. Well, at least I'm going to give them the treats and they're happy about that, that's for sure. But no, nothing going on in the forest. Seems so strange. 
I love all my babies. Hi, what are you doing in here? Hmm, maybe they just like acting like a grouse, winding in amongst the dead leaves, but she saw their snacks coming, so she's going to go check it out too. She definitely doesn't want to miss out. <laughs> oh boy. Well, I may as well get the eggs while I'm out here and see what's going on, but I'm definitely not touching this little lady in the bottom because she's sitting on a couple eggs and I don't think anything productive is going to come of it, but you definitely don't want to stick your hand in there because she is one protective mama. And she's just a total sweetheart, but I've she she really snipped me good trying when I didn't realize that she was broody in there. I just thought she was just laying her egg in there, but now I know we all know nobody's to touch her and leave her be. And she can just be happy in her own little nest. All right, guys. Well, you're having a good day out here and having some treats and everybody's okay and nobody's nobody's upset and nobody's stuck in the twigs because that's why I wanted to just check. So it's the next day and apparently I don't know my microphone isn't off for my entire time I tell you all about how to make the pie. So I have to do a voiceover for this. I'm sorry about that but that's okay. Whatever. You can just see my mouth moving funny. But here I want to tell you all about making a white Russian pie, something different than pumpkin pie, and it's so good. And you don't need a lot of ingredients. Um, it's quite simple. You only need uh, fresh farm eggs, real whipped cream, Kahlua the liqueur, sugar, some gelatin, and some cookie crumbs, or black, dark, chocolate cookie crumbs, but you could also use grain wafer crumbs if you prefer those instead of the dark, but that really goes, the dark chocolate crumb bottom really makes for the white Russian really nice. And it kind of goes with, with the chocolate coffee thing. And so, so you need some butter. So the first thing that we need to do is I just start on a pot and I get it, I want to get it simmering so that I can get the gelatin to start to dissolve. So I'm going to put the gelatin in my bowl and make some, like a type of double boiler kind of thing. And put that on the stove on low while I'm waiting to get the rest of the stuff done. So these are the ingredients. This is what the Kahlua bottle looks like. It's so yummy. You might have to lick the lid while you're making this. It tastes so good. And oh, I also have two tablespoons of vodka in the that measuring cup. And I want to let you know that I'm going to put the description of the recipe, the exact recipe, in the description box below. Now I'm doubling this recipe, but I'm going to put a recipe for one pie down below. But if you want to double it like I am, feel free. You can totally do that. So right now I'm just putting some cold water in the bottom of my pot or my glass baking dish actually. It's nice and heavy duty so it's totally fine in there as a double boiler. But you want to use something that's pretty sturdy. So here's the gelatin, and for the gelatin, you can use anything that you have. If you have gelatin in a jar, like in a canister, that you already use for things, that is totally fine. And I believe it's one tablespoon is equivalent to one packet. And so I doubled it, so I used two packages, but for the one pie, you just need to use the one and half of the water. So in the meantime, I'm just going to take this to the stove and get it all whisked up and get the crystals to dissolve properly so that there's no little gelatin bits because have, if you've ever made jello and the bottom of the jello is all like gritty, 
you don't want that. You want it really smooth. Okay, so nice. the water is so, simmering. So I'm just going to put gonna my little glass. Really nice over simmering water. My little glass dish so that I always use. I'm just going to place my like glass dish boiler. into the it's water. It's broken. It's super thick. And, and I place it right it. in the bottom and I'm turning this down to simmer. And I'm just going to whisk it and let that stuff dissolve in the water. Let the gelatin dissolve and then when I, I'm going to leave it for a few minutes and when I come back it'll be all liquefied and dissolved and be just perfectly ready to go. It's going to be great. This is looking good. It's starting to totally dissolve the little crystals. Perfect. So I'm just going to leave this here for a moment and show you the gelatin. So this is what I use. It's called Knox Gelatin and they're just little packages. But if you have if you have beef gelatin or any other kind of gelatin at home, the powder, um, you feel free to use that. It's equivalent to one package is equivalent to one tablespoon and I used one package per pie. Um, I, later on I realized you could use a, a tablespoon and a half if you're using powdered gelatin or one and a half packages would be would make it firm up faster just because I'm in a rush and I just should have made it the night before to let it sit in the fridge but I'm making it the day of in the morning so we'll see if it sets up so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my chocolate cookie graham crumbs which are just Oreos that you buy Oreo crumbs and at the store in a box or a bag or whatever and you're going to mix it with your butter and I'm doubling the recipe so I'm using twice the amount of butter so I'm going to go ahead and put in half a cup of butter and four tablespoons of sugar because a regular recipe calls for two and I ended up mixing this up and it wasn't feeling mixed all the way so I warmed up another quarter cup of butter and that made it just absolutely perfect. Now the recipe calls for combining these ingredients and then pressing them into a springform pan which would be really perfect if I knew for sure it was going to set but I don't know that I have enough time to set all the way. Kids won't care. It'll taste the same, but I'm not sure it'll get super firm because I'm making it the day of. So I'm not going to use a springform pan today. I'm just going to use pie plates. But feel free to use the, the original recipe. My auntie's recipe calls for a nine inch springform pan because when you pop it out of the pan, it makes such a beautiful presentation on, on like a cake stand or a plate or something. I'm sure because it would look so good with the layers, but I'm not, like I said, I, I'm not sure if it's gonna set. So I'm just gonna add a little bit extra butter because I, it's just a little bit too crumbly. And that is for a double recipe, three cups of chocolate wafer cookie crumbs. Oh wow, this looks amazing. Mm. The smell of cookie crumbs with butter in it is like, uh, it's just reminds me of eating cookie dough. It smells so good. <laughs> oh my goodness. So here's the pie plates that I have out and these are deep dish pie plates. One is fluted because that's just what I have. Otherwise I would have used two of those glass ones. Um, but you can use you can use anything. That's just what I'm choosing to use today. So this is a thinner pie plate and I'm just going to compare the two because then you can see how what a deep dish this is because this needs a lot of room in it. That thinner small pie plate isn't going to cut cut the mustard. We need the thicker, heavy, heavier um, deeper dish pie plate for this if you're going to use that. I'm 
just gonna split this crumb mixture between the two pie plates and press it down until I get a nice firm crust and I don't need to grease the pie plates because there's so much there's melted butter already in here so it's not going to to stick wow that's a lot of crumbs um hmm I think I might not need to use all these this seems like a lot of crumb topping in the bottom I think I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna get rid of some and put it in the freezer for another time in a baggie because I can always use it for something else because that would that's gonna be a really thick crust so I don't think I quite need that much that's looking way better I don't know how evenly distributed this is but I'm going to try and make them even evenly thick and just press down all the edges nice Mmm, that looks so pretty already and I haven't even got all the filling in there yum it smells good Okay, this looks great. These look really good. Let's go and check on the gelatin. This looks so good. Look at it, it's all dissolved. This is perfect. This is how we want it. I'm just gonna give that a really good whisk and make turn the heat completely off of the burner. And just let that sit in there until we're, I'm ready to use it now. Okay, I'm over here now at my mixer and I've got my farm eggs. Apparently I didn't realize that my volume was off. <laughs> The whole time I was talking but that's okay so basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna separate the eggs and I'm gonna separate the yolks from the whites because I want to end up putting in the yolks into my mixer so I'm it calls for three eggs I'm actually using seven the reason I'm using seven is because I have a couple Banty eggs in here which are really miniature so they're not very big so instead of six I'm gonna use seven so I'm just gonna get these all separated out and then get going on the mixer because we want it to be really thick and light that's what the instructions say thick and light so that's what we're going for. Oh yum, this looks perfect. This is thick and light and beautiful. What a pretty color. Okay, so I'm just going to run over and I'm going to grab my gelatin because I want to gradually whisk in my dissolved gelatin into the mixture. And I want to get it all because I don't want it to not set up. So I want to get every last drop. So I've got to get the spatula so I can get every little bit out of this and get this blended in there. So the next step says to set them in a larger bowl filled with ice until the mixture thickens while you're doing the, the rest of the beating the ingredients. 
but I don't have time to get out a bunch of ice cubes so I'm just going to get some veggies or something out of my freezer I think and I'm gonna set it underneath of the pan so first I'm just gonna add in the rest of the vodka and the Kahlua and then it's pretty much ready to sit out and chill while I beat the egg whites and the other part, the whipping cream. Oh, it's gonna be so good. I just love mousse and it just, it's gonna be so yummy. I love Kahlua though already and Kahlua is like coffee flavored and just, right now I'm not drinking any coffee so this is like a real treat for me. I just love it. Okay, let's see what we can find in here to use instead of ice that's faster. Um, I have some homemade granola in here. I have some spinach. That's going to have to do. So I'm just going to lay that underneath my bowl and make a little cooling bowl. And that, will, that should be perfect. Oh, you know what? I need this pot. I need this mixer pot to go with my KitchenAid so that I can beat the other things. So I'm going to have to transfer this into something else. Okay, so now I've got all of my egg whites and I want to beat them into soft peaks. So I'm gonna add them to the mixer that I just washed because I was using that and I knew I needed it. And I'm also going to add three tablespoons sugar, but because I'm doubling it, it should be six, but because I'm also cutting back on white sugar, I only actually used five. So I'm just getting that all whipped up into some soft till it comes to soft peaks and then I'm going to to take it off and use that same pot for my whipping cream so I'm just going to measure out the whipping cream now which is calls for half a cup but I actually used the whole box because I realized that the topping uses whipping cream as well and it measures out to be the entire one liter container so if you're doubling it just simply use the whole con one liter container it's just easier to whip it all at one time instead of making the topping after making the filling so this isn't a hard recipe but it's just there's lots of steps it's easy it's just it's got lots of things to do so i'm just going to add those five tablespoons now of sugar and continue to beat this until it has some beautiful peaks forming. Okay, so now it looks absolutely beautiful. So what we're going to do is, I'm actually, I'm gonna use this big great big bowl because it's going to be way easier to mix it I think that is some beautiful egg whites beat right there perfectly meringue so first I'm just going to fold this in the filling mixture with the egg whites and I'm going to fold that together and folding just really gently by stirring along the sides of the pot. Not whipping it or beating it hard, just being really soft, gentle folding strokes. It is kind of a tedious thing folding, but it makes for a really nice finished product. So it's worth doing. Sometimes if you stir too fast or were to whisk this together, it would actually turn into a liquid. 
So we want to keep it kind of moussey and soft and meringue by just folding. So I'm just going to fold this all in and then I'm going to get this pop washed out one more time so I can get the whipped cream going. I just gave the bowl a really quick wash because I'm going to have too much stuff to fit into this one pot. So I'm just going to quickly dry it out so I can use it for folding all of my filling in, in one big pot and then I can split it into the two pie dishes. Yeah, that's working much better. I won't have to, I won't have to have it overflowing but I'm just going to still keep it cool on my frozen veggies for a few minutes while I get this whipping cream all whipped up into stiff peaks. I love whipping cream when it's not too sweet, so that's why I also didn't add as much sugar as, as the recipe called for, but you can totally do that. So I'm just gonna beat this thing up to stiff peaks, and I have a little trick that I throw my tea towel over top of my KitchenAid so it doesn't splash all over my stuff, and it usually works like a charm. And I just drape it over it when it's going and I start it on really low and I don't blast it because I've had many accidents as I'm sure you have with beaters before. Yeah, that's looking really, really good. So this is now the, gonna be split up into the filling and the topping because I poured the whole liter in there. So I'm just gonna divide that pretty much exactly in half half for the topping and half for the for the filling oops I just remembered I just reread the recipe and I need to add I need to add three tablespoons of sugar and six tablespoons of Kahlua and I'm cutting back just slightly on the alcohol but I really want that coffee flavor but I don't want that super Wow this is a boozy <laughs> flavor kind of mousse. So I'm just, I've cut that back a little and all the recipe, the exact amount of ingredients will be in the description box below. So if you're not following along with me because I'm confusing you and doubling it, you can go down to the, to the description and get it exact, the exact amounts. Now I'm going to incorporate the whipped cream filling part in with my other filling part that I have on the frozen stuff or on ice and I'm just going to gently fold that in and this is going to take a little bit more time because it's a lot to fold so it's going to take a few minutes to get it all incorporated but oh, it smells so good. It smells just heavenly. I just have to have a sample of this before I start even thinking about putting it in the pie fill pie shell that's for sure mmm so yummy
it's taken a couple minutes to fold but it's coming together beautifully it looks so nice and it's so light and fluffy this is exactly how it's supposed to be or at least auntie if you're watching you can tell me <laughs> but from how i've made other moussey kind of pies before this is the way that the filling should look it looks really good i'm liking it i'm liking the texture of it it's really it just smells so good in here if you could just smell it's like fresh coffee brewing with vanilla oh yum I don't resist. I have to taste it. Mm, amazing. So I'm just getting this put into my pie shells and smoothing it out and making a nice kind of top on it as smooth as I can. And then I'm just wiping the edge to give it a nice any edges, any bits that I've kind of slopped around the edges, around the edge of the pie plate, I wipe off with a p little piece of paper towel because it just makes for a nicer presentation that way. So I just want to smooth this second pie out. It's coming together so beautiful. And the next thing that it actually calls for is chocolate curls. Now, I don't have any chocolate curls, but I do have some delicious fresh raspberries. And I think I'm gonna rinse those off and I'm gonna sprinkle those fresh raspberries on the very top of it when it's, when it's right before serving, because I don't want it to turn the whipped cream pink and cause any liquid on the top but these are looking beautiful. And uh, yeah, that's what I think I'm gonna do, just for a hint of freshness and fruit. But you can do anything. You could put chocolate chips, you could put chocolate curls, you could put um, cho that chocolate dust or whatever you want on it. There's so many, so many things. I wouldn't put anything too, I would keep it chocolate or fruit, mind you, for the flavor, but that's what that's just an, another idea that you could be open to it it just it would be so good so oh these look so pretty i'm loving them wow that was a lot and this is the kalua it is just amazing if you haven't had it before it's a delicious liqueur and these turned out fantastic they were a little fiddly but they turned out really good here's me I don't realize that my phone is muted <laughs> and I'm telling you all about them. I'm so excited that they turned out so pretty and my house smells great. So now what I want to do is I got to get these into the fridge and I got to get the house or the kitchen cleaned up a bit and then I'm going to start on prepping all the stuff from yesterday, taking those casseroles out and getting my turkey prepped and popped into the oven. I like to wear gloves when I do it because I just don't like um, raw meat and stuff under my fingernails so it's just a thing that I do with beef and pretty much all meat. So I'm gonna, just going to stuff this guy and it's the tiniest little turkey I got. He's 11 pounds and I've never actually done one this small. So I hope that there's a little bit of leftovers, but if not, as long as everybody gets fed, that is all that matters. So yesterday I had made two bowls of stuffing and I'm just getting the one bowl out. I separated it because once I kind of touch that stuffing, I'm not going to, to um, with my hands and the raw inside of the turkey, I'm not going to to put that anywhere else so I'm just going to stuff both ends with this turkey and see if I can fit as much as I possibly can in there and then um, I have that other bowl of stuffing that I'm going to roast in the oven and what I do is I mix the roasted stuffing with the after the turkey's done I take all the stuffing out of the bird and I mix it all together so you've got the one that's all full of the beautiful juices 
and everything and all the crusty stuffing and then I mix them together and I put it back in the oven for about 20 minutes to crisp up the top and it's just so delicious so yummy So now I'm just going to put some salt and pepper on it and cut up some butter cubes because I always like to put butter underneath of the skin of the turkey. I just find that it keeps the turkey so moist. So altogether, I don't know, I probably use like maybe an, between an eighth and a quarter cup of butter cubed up. And I just tuck it like under the skin all over and I put it on top of the stuffing and then what I do is I pour a couple cups of water in the bottom of the roaster so I don't get anything burning and it makes more juice in case the turkey's not that juicy for the gravy and then I drip I've got the salt and pepper on there and then I drizzle olive oil on the top and it makes an amazing bird in the end and then I always take my lid off of my turkey for the last half an hour to get the top all super crispy so going into my little front room which is kind of like my cold room where I keep casseroles it's almost like having another fridge and I've got my other casseroles that I made yesterday, the broccoli and cheese casserole and the cheesy carrot casserole and my other thing of stuffing. And I'm gonna grab that out. And so when the turkey is three quarters of the way done, I will, or a little bit more, I will pop them into the oven and get them cooking. Now here's the other little gadget that I was telling you about, this amazing little potato peeler. I don't even have to do anything. I just stand there and put the potato on there. And I'm really impressed that it doesn't waste a whole lot of skin. I was wondering if it cuts really deep into it like an apple peeler. But that's why I didn't use the apple peeler because it takes the core out as well. But this thing was hot diggity. It worked so good. I hardly had to do anything. This thing is amazing. I love it. It peeled up these potatoes so quickly. I'm definitely going to use this again. Sometimes those gadgets, like I said, are not very good, but this one works really good. Plus it has a cord, so you can, it's not like the battery's going to die. So that was really nice. It sounded like it was dying, but it wasn't. It was just the sound of the peeler. So I'm heating up my casseroles and I've got things in the bottom of my oven and I've got the things, casseroles that I made yesterday and I've got some green beans ready and now I'm going to spend time with family. Okay, it's, gra it's all about grandma time right now. <laughs> Who could deny this adorable face? Isn't he just so beautiful? And his skin is just so lovely. I just love this guy. And his personality is as great as he's so cute. And his personality is just so cute to go with it. He's just so happy go lucky. He's just amazing. I'm lucky. I'm so lucky to be his grandma. Oh, it's feasting time for sure. And it's a shame, unfortunately, my daughter can't come because her grandbaby has a cold or the flu or something. So we're just going to chow her delicious carrots she requested without her. But I'm going to send her a carry home bag. Oh, Tyler looks like he's got some sort of have found a mushroom. <laughs> There's been a mushroom joke going on around here. It's so funny. And this little guy is just staying like a little angel so we can eat. We are so blessed. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and you're and maybe you'll give the white Russian pie a chance. And if you do, I would love for you to comment and leave me a message about if you enjoyed it. And in the meantime, please subscribe and hit the notification bell to all so you don't miss an episode. 
Thanks so much for watching, friends. Bye for now.